Well, hello. My name is Motor Maniac. This is a 2004 R6. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about problems with your horn. Now, I'm actually about to sell this puppy, so I had to go and get it inspected. Unfortunately, it didn't pass, and the only reason it didn't pass is because this horn didn't work. Now, the horn itself does work. Yeah, there's an easy way to tell what your problem is. All right, so I knew that it had to be a couple of things. All right, it could have been an actual problem with the horn itself. The horn itself is maybe dead, or it's a wiring problem. So you can narrow that down very easily. I went ahead and took my, my horn right off the front here. It's right underneath the light assembly, right underneath between the forks, right there. It's being held on by a 10 millimeter bolt. Just go ahead and take a socket to it, take it right off. And then you have two little wires to undo off the top, right here. So, a good way to test that is you, you just take a little bit of speaker wire, it's just copper wire right there. You plug it into your battery, positive, and then negative. And then you curl one of these ends here with the touch of the battery, careful of course, into there like that. And when you complete the circuit, like such, your horn will go off. If your horn doesn't go off, it means that there's a problem with the horn itself and not the wiring. Now my horn went off, which means there's a problem with the wiring. Now what I'm doing right here is I've had I've taken an X-Acto knife and I'm peeling back this wiring harness right here. And that way I can tell if there's a short or maybe a break in one of these lines. I'll probably take one of these little boots off too. And we'll trace it all the way back to the left switch. As you can see, the button doesn't work while well, the horn's not attached anyway. Um, and hopefully, the problem's not down in here because I really don't want to take apart that switch. But we'll get to that if we, uh, if we get to it. So hopefully, there'll be a break before I get to here. And if it's not there before I get to there, I'll split this little case and go follow all those wires all the way into the switch. And hopefully, it'll be a break somewhere in there. If not, it's a problem with the switch or the fuse. So stay tuned. We'll figure out which one it is. All right, lucky me. You get to know exactly what I was talking about. I found my problem right there. So there was a bend, a break, something. Maybe they got caught in the forks while they were turning. I was doing some work on it last year, and I'd be willing to bet that's when this happened. So obviously that's not going to make for a great connection. In fact, that's not even connected at all. So I would be uh, willing to bet a lot that <laughs> that's the problem right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solder this. We're going to... Um, completely uh, remake these connections. All right, so what I've done here is I've just cut off each wire, and now we're gonna strip the protective coatings back on all four of the ends right here, and then we'll get to work soldering these pieces together, put some shrink rack tubing over everything, and make it look nice and professional. All right, so we've got our wires tied back together here. We've got a nice hot soldering iron on our left hand, we're gonna get some flux here in a second. And we're just gonna heat these up ever so slightly. And then put some flux on them, tie them up. Alrighty, as you can see, they're all soldered up. Not the best job, but it's functional. They're nice and stiff, they don't move too much. Um, so now we're just gonna take some rubber cement, nothing special, and coat each of these. Let them sit for about an hour or so. We'll slide this shrimp rack shrink wrap tubing down, excuse me, and we'll be good to go.